Now, the most exciting thing about what I get to do is I get to teach normal, everyday people that they can be this memorable, they can be this influential, this compelling, this effective by simply tapping into something that already exists within them. The truth is, for any one of you who wants your voice to be heard, who wants to make your difference in the world, you don't have to look all around. You don't have to look at your best friends. You just have to look at the stories that are already within you. And I promise you, they are there. And today, I am going to teach you how you can find them and use them to make your voice be heard and grow your business to new heights. How does that sound? Okay, okay. Organizations and individuals who are in those organizations are under a lot of pressure these days to, to stand out, to make more genuine, authentic connections with the people within their teams, with the customers that they serve. And, and we try to find all of these different ways, infographics, uh, PowerPoints, to, to connect with the various audiences that we have to serve. And, and what ends up happening is when the stakes are highest, we end up saying more words instead of telling, instead of using the thing that actually makes the most difference, and that is stories. Why does storytelling work so well? Well, the first reason is this. It really gives you the ability to fast track trust. And isn't that what we're all about right here? Right? Isn't that what you're really trying to do? When you meet a new prospect, what's happening there? They're asking themselves, can I trust that person? Do I like that person? Do they have my best interest at heart? Story can answer all those questions and do it very, very quickly. And here is the magical thing about storytelling. Is the, I heard a, um, a marketing expert recently say, the strength of your brand, the strength of what you do, is no longer measured by how well you can tell your network what you do. It's measured by how well your network can tell their network what you do, right? And how their network can tell their network. If you, do you remember the game uh, Telephone growing up as a kid and how you would whisper a message into someone's ear and it would go all the way around the room and it would come back to you and it'd be oh so funny because it sounded like, you know, nothing that it started out to be. Don't leave your messaging, your branding, your the thing that you have to tell the world up to a game of telephone. If you tell a story, people can remember it. Now, why does this matter? Well, cortisol is responsible for increased focus and attention. Ladies and gentlemen, you are at a tech conference listening to a storyteller and it's the first session of the third day. It's dark in here, but you were all paying attention to that story, weren't you? Because you can't help yourselves. <laughs> No, like if what we're trying to do is grab people's attention, tell stories because we can't help. But listen, we're drawn in even when we don't want to be. Now let me ask you, how many of you are dealing with, um, you have a lot of price conversations? Do you have price conversations? Don't you hate price conversations? Stories can eliminate the challenge of those conversations because story actually changes the conversation. Instead of dollars and cents, it moves it to value. So this is, this, is what I, this is what I want you to remember. When you are getting stuck in that price conversation, it means you're not telling them the story right. You're not giving them the story that they need to hear. You're not giving them the story that will illustrate the value because we don't buy the thing. We buy what the thing will do for us. Organizations who get this, who work to harness the power of their stories are the ones who are able to take it to the next level, to make the biggest difference, to stand out in a crowded, distracted world. But here's the big problem, okay? We don't even know what a story is anymore. In its rise to buzzword status, it's lost a lot of the meaning. Great for me, it means job security, right? <laughs> Not so good for all of you because we don't even know when we're telling a story. It is not simply a mission statement or a tagline. Have you ever been moved by a mission statement? <laughs> Felt the oxytocin flowing because of a mission statement? No, it's not a history lesson. I, I, I go to all these about us pages and it's, 
We were founded in 1983. Well, congratulations, you're old. <laughs> Not that old, I was born in 81, but like bullet points on the time. And then in 1991, we moved to the office down the street. Nobody cares about that. A history lesson is not a story, and it's also not high level vague talk. We believe in excellence and going above and beyond for our customers. Who says we believe in no excellence and we really don't like our customers? Like that is not going to differentiate you in any way, shape, or form. Those are not stories. Now, even all of that being said, I know it's probably hard to visualize. So I have a before and after case study for you about a brand who thought they were telling a story and then what happened when they actually did. But as you're watching this video, I want you to ask yourself two questions. One, did she tell a story? And two, how do I feel about this? Am I getting engaged in this? Ready? Let's do it. Okay, so what'd you think? This is my favorite part, because, because I know what you think. Oh, that was pretty good, <laughs> right? But you know it's the before video, so you know that it's not good. <laughs> I, I know, I know what you're, I know what you're thinking. Yes, here's, here's the truth. You can do pretty good things and not tell a story. You can. I'm, I'll be the first one to say it. You can do pretty good things and not tell a story. But what I want you to see is the difference a story can make. So now I want you to watch this after video and see if you can tell the difference. Could you tell the difference? <laughs> mm. Storytelling is a strategic skill, one that can be taught and developed. And that teaching begins with our time together. I'm not just going to tell you about stories. I am going to teach you and your people through stories so you can feel the effect that a great story can have. Let me ask you this. When I was talking about physics class, how many of you remembered a physics classroom or a science classroom of your own? You can raise your hands. You can nod your heads. Yeah. How many of you, when I was talking about a roller coaster, could picture a roller coaster that maybe you used to ride? Raise your hands, nod your head. Yes, it's because I know what I'm doing up here, folks. <laughs> OK? I am taking my ideas, and I am sticking them into your brains. And because you are using your own imagery to create the rest of that story, it will stick with you longer. I don't think there's anything that brings me greater joy than when I speak at a conference, and perhaps I come back the next year, and I'll have somebody come up to me and say, I'm still think picturing that Molly in those wide hallways that you talk about. You will stay with people for years. And isn't that what we all want? Isn't that what we all need to have our voices be heard? Story will help you do it. My name is Kendra Hall. I'm a speaker, author, consultant, but most importantly, I am a storyteller. But this isn't about my stories. This is about you and your stories and how you can use them to your greatest advantage. And it is my hope that each and every one of your beautiful individual voices are heard that you make your impact each and every single one of you. And that no matter what wide hallways you walk down, no matter who is standing at your side, that everyone who passes by knows who you are, knows your message, knows your voice, because you chose to tell your story. Thank you so much for sharing this space with me. It was truly my honor, and I can't wait to hear the stories you'll tell. Thank you.